Hey guys, Frightener22 here, back with another uh, Q Reviews. Uh, as previously announced, uh, this week's going to be a Paul Verhoeven triple feature, so we're just going to get right into it. Uh, the first movie that I had got from uh, my Netflix Q is the 1990 futuristic uh, Total Recall, and the synopsis goes a little something like this. Life is mind-bending and chaotic than director Paul Verhoeven's violent, Oscar-winning sci-fi adventure based on a Philip K. Dick story. When construction worker Douglas Quaid, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, discovers a memory chip in his brain during a virtual reality trip, he also discovers that this past has been reinvented, has been invented to conceal a plot of planetary domination. Soon, he's off to Mars to find out who he is and who planted the chip. Now, um, that said, I gotta say, guys, I watched this uh, about two days ago, and I really really enjoyed this movie. This is actually one of the few uh, Schwarzenegger action movies that I had not seen yet, and uh, my first thought after watching it was, well, what the hell took me so long in seeing this, because this film was awesome. I loved everything about it. I thought that um, the visual uh, futuristic um, imagery that Verhoeven created was just really cool. I mean, the set design was just really, it was just really visually pleasing to an audience member. It was just really cool, um, really action-packed. I mean, in addition to Schwarzenegger, you have a really stellar cast with the likes of uh, Sharon Stone, who plays his, um, you know, plays his phony wife, if you will. And then you also have great, um, great appearances by uh, Michael Ironside and uh, Marshall Bell, and, uh, you know, the cast all around was just really great and, you know, packed a real big punch in this movie. So I really enjoyed it a lot. I mean, the, the fight scenes were really incredible. Um, just, it was just nonstop action and a really, really, uh, well-told story. I mean, you know, in the, in the special features on this film, uh, you know, the makers of the film were going as far as saying that this was a thinking man's action movie. And I couldn't agree more with that statement. This was a really really well-written and well-directed, um, film all around, and, you know, in as much as, uh, you know, Schwarzenegger films have their, you know, their goofy one-liners at times that may come off, you know, probably not as, uh, you know, they probably didn't want them to be as laughable as they did. I couldn't help but crack up at one specific, uh, spot in this movie where Schwarzenegger is actually, um, fighting Michael Ironside's character on, like, an elevator shaft, and there's one, there's just this one instance where, um, the elevator shaft is moving up and Michael Ironside is hanging off the ledge and his body gets crushed by, um, the ceiling up above and Schwarzenegger just, like, belts out at him saying something like, see you at the potty, Richter. It was just so funny. Like, I just, like, there was not one part in the movie where I had really laughed out loud up until that part. It was just hilarious all around. So, you know, like I said, this was a really, really solid action film. Um, if you guys have been seeing it yet, I highly, highly recommend seeing this movie. Um, using the Netflix star system, I definitely have to give this movie four out of five stars. Just a great flick. Now, the next film that I uh, got from for this Paul Verhoeven triple feature is one that has gotten a stigma over the years as being just incredibly bad and has been put on the pendulum as a cult classic by uh, many people's standards. Uh, and I'm talking about the 1995 Showgirls. Now, let me take you back to 1995. I remember seeing the commercials for this and being, you know, intrigued, you know, uh, seeing Jesse from Saved by the Bell um, playing what it seemed like to be a stripper at that point. And I'll never forget when the rating came across the screen and it said rated NC-17. And I recall thinking, well, what the fuck is that? I mean, I know R. I mean, I ha was familiar with X just because, you know, being at local video shops, seeing the adult section, you knew that those were X-rated films. But I was like, what the hell is NC-17? So that was Showgirls was the first film that ever introduced that rating to me. So, I mean, I had always, I had always seen bits, uh, clips of this on television, but I never thought it was worth checking out because I mean, no one ever wants to watch a movie on, like, Spike or TNT where you just know everything's edited, especially a movie like this. Now, the synopsis on this is, an infamous bomb when first released, Showgirls now vies with Mommy Dears as camp classic. 
Nomi Malone, played by Elizabeth Berkeley, travels to Las Vegas with dreams of becoming a showgirl, but ends up working as a stripper where the patrons couldn't care less about her time step. They're interested in a different kind of step, and rate. Kyle MacLachlan and Gina Gershon co-star. Now this film, I don't... I could, after seeing it, I couldn't really understand why it got such a stigma of being so bad. Because truthfully, I think that it shows a pretty, um, you know, a pretty honest portrayal of all these sleazy, money-grubbing, you know, um, people that work in Vegas that are just trying to work showgirls and work the casinos. And just, I think that it really captured, like, you know, the, the dirtiness and, like, you know, just like I said, the sleaziness of these characters. So I thought in that respect, it really, you know, did justice to like, you know, that kind of, uh, that kind of world out in Vegas, you know, Sin City. I thought it captured that pretty well. Now, the character, um, Nomi that Elizabeth Berkeley plays, she's a really dysfunctional, um, messed up character. And, you know, the whole time she, there's just, um, there's just scenes in it where, you know, the, the story overall seems pretty, uh, you know, seems pretty acceptable. I, I found it, you know, pretty intriguing, but there's just certain scenes in this movie that maybe, like, the certain scenes themselves just made people be like, well, what? I was watching this, and, you know, there's just a certain scene where her best friend in the film just gets brutally raped by one of the sleazy Las Vegas, um, Las Vegas, um, you know, producers, uh, compadres, if you will, and I just thought, well, why was that necessary for this random, you know, like, this random showboating guy to rape the best friend, like, brutally, like, put her in the hospital? Furthermore, there's just, like, you know, um, there's just scenes where, like, the top showgirl in town, played by Gina Gershon, is, you know, has, like, seems like, it seems like she has, uh, bisexual tendencies and, like, a somewhat of a odd attractiveness to, um, Elizabeth Berkeley's character, and I just didn't really understand that, like, the whole time the Elizabeth Berkeley character is vying that she's not a whore, she's not a whore. Needless to say, by the end of the film, you realize that she's, like, a whore times ten, based on her past experiences, plus what she's done in Vegas. And then, the last shot where you see Gina Gersh and Elizabeth Ber Berkeley kiss in the hospital, I was just like, well, what? I was like, didn't you hate each other the entire time? I was like, what was the point of that kiss to prove that both of them are bisexual. I just didn't get it. But, you know, overall, I thought the story in it was interesting enough. You know, it kept my interest peaked. And I mean, truthfully, I, I am still kind of stunned that it gets this reputation as being like, you know, just so bad. I mean, showgirls, like, you know, people, some people put it as far to put it in the same cult classic stature of, like, Teen Witch and Troll 2 and Howard the Duck, and I mean, I guess, but really? I mean, I don't see that completely. So, I mean, that all that said, using the Netflix star system, I'd give this 3 out of 5. I thought it was decent.